And there is, of course, the old joke, how do you make a guitarist stop playing? Put some sheet music in front of him. And it's true that amongst other musicians, us guitarists have a pretty poor reputation when it comes to reading traditional music notation. And we're considered to be these kind of lazy, good for nothing tab readers. Now, is this just snobbery on the part of other musicians? And is there in fact any point in the average guitar player these days learning to read music when it is perhaps an irrelevant and antiquated way of doing things? Now, it's my personal opinion that it is a very worthwhile skill to develop and it will make you a better musician in all kinds of different ways. And what I want to do in this video is to discuss some of the reasons why you might like to consider learning to read music. I'm going to talk about a few ways that you can get started and uh, the good news is it's nowhere near as hard as you might think. I remember when I was learning to play guitar way back in the day and it was the pre-internet era. It was almost the pre-tab era I think. Tab was around but it was this newfangled thing and none of my early guitar teachers used tab. I don't think any of the early instructional materials, books and so forth that I use contained any tab so that wasn't really an option and I learned to read music right from the start and I'm really pleased about that. It's definitely made me a stronger musician and these days I don't read music a great deal but I'm a fairly competent reader. I'm not an amazing sight reader or anything like that but uh, I can you know, make some kind of sense of any piece of music that you want to put in front of me. Now I'm certainly not saying that music reading is compulsory if you want to become a good guitar player. There's of course a massive long list of great players who haven't got a clue when it comes to reading music and uh, back when I used to teach a lot of private lessons music reading was always a totally optional thing and uh, there are certainly more important things to work on in the beginning when you're first starting to learn to play guitar I think but if people did express an interest in learning to read music that would certainly be something that I would encourage. I want to move on and discuss some reasons why you might like to consider learning to read music. Uh, I'm really just talking about learning the basics of music notation, being able to read some simple melodies, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm not talking about being an amazing sight reader unless that's something you're really keen to do and you know, there are certain musical situations where that kind of level of reading ability is really important. But I think for, for the average player, just, just knowing the basics, being able to read some simple melodies is enough. So I'm going to give you some reasons, 10 reasons, 5 reasons, maybe I'll see how many reasons I can come up with. But the first thing that springs to mind is learning to read music will improve your rhythm. And you know, a lot of guitarists that I come across have quite a weak sense of rhythm. And I think one of the reasons for this might be the ubiquity of tab, because of course one of the things you don't get from tab is very much rhythmic information. It's all about you know, the numbers where you put your fingers, but other than the spacing of those numbers and maybe some bar lines there's no further rhythmic information and some purists some guitar teachers are a little bit anti-tab I think I don't feel that way at all I think tab has its place it can be very useful I do use it quite a lot myself but one of the big disadvantages as I've said is that lack of rhythmic information so I think by just learning some basic rhythmic notation the values of the notes the values of the rests being able to recognise things like syncopation, tied notes, it's going to improve your rhythm no end. It'll be very, very helpful. And it might just be the case that when you are reading a tab, you're able to just glance above the tab to the traditional notation and just get a clearer sense of when those notes should be played in time. It's a really useful thing to be able to do. And a second reason for learning to read music would be it massively improves your understanding and knowledge of the fretboard. Again, the disadvantage of tab is it's all about just where you put your fingers. 
but with music notation straight away you're having to think in terms of note names, pitches, rhythms. It's just a much more musical way to come at learning the guitar. And related to the previous reason, I think learning to read music will give you a much greater understanding of music theory. I and mean, if you're learning to read music on the guitar, you've got no choice but to know the names of all the notes on the fretboard really well. And also you'll need to know things like key signatures and uh, which notes belong to which scales, all of that stuff. It just comes alive in a real musical score. That uh, It doesn't happen that way with tab. Reason number four is learning to read music will make it much easier to get along with and to communicate with other musicians. And if you're not a guitar player, the vast majority of other musicians think in terms of traditional music notation. And if you learn to do that as well, then it's going to make interacting with other musicians much easier and uh, it will also potentially open up more opportunities and more kind of job opportunities for you as a musician, if that's something you want to get into. And yes, of course, this does depend partly on context. I mean, in the average rock band rehearsal, you're probably not going to be bringing sheet music along to that. But in other musical situations, sheet music is very much the done thing. Certainly in a lot of jazz situations at rehearsals, people will bring along charts or scores and you'll be expected to read chord charts and perhaps melodies as well. Uh, for certain types of recording sessions you might also have sheet music and be expected to read parts and uh, also in certain types of live situation. I'm thinking uh, in your know, theatre gigs, I've done a little bit of, of theatre work in the past and certainly in those situations you'll be expected to read proper music. And you know what if you're a songwriter and you want to get some real strings played on your indie rock anthem and in that situation it's much easier just to write out some basic parts rather than having to clumsily explain to the string players what it is you want or have to pay some arranger to do it for you. And lastly reason number five and there are probably more reasons out there I can't think of any more off the top of my head right now but uh, reason number five is learning to read music will open up a whole load of new music for you to discover because uh, remember not everything comes in tab format and uh, there's loads of great music that isn't tabbed out uh, whether it's uh, you know classical guitar music or you know a lot of those old classic guitar books sort of jazz instructional books that I've got none of those come with tab and uh, without learning to read music all of that would be closed off to you. You can learn from other instruments whether it's violin or piano or saxophone you know pick up a copy of the the Charlie Parker Omni book learn some Charlie Parker solos or even just pick up a copy of the real book and play through some of those quite simple jazz tunes like I did at the start of this video. So I've convinced you to have a go at learning to read music. How do you get started? And this isn't meant to be an exhaustive how to read music video. I just want to give you a few tips here. Uh, it's really not that hard. I think you can learn the basics of music reading in an hour or so. You can probably be reading some simple melodies within a few days and yeah if you want to go on to become some amazing sight reader that's going to take a ton of work and experience but just learning the basics I don't think should take too long. And the first thing you're going to want to do is just learn the very basics of pitch and rhythm and uh, music notation it's written on the five lines of the staff and the pitch information how high or low the note is is written vertically and the notes are going to be either on a line or in the spaces and you can sometimes get some extra lines underneath or above the staff itself just to extend the range and there are various mnemonics you can use to learn the names of these notes they can be helpful initially I think so uh, every green bus drives fast is one of the mnemonics for learning the names of the notes on the lines and then face gives you the names of the notes in the spaces. So that gives you the basic note names. There you can of course get sharps and flats as well and for those you can either just put a sharp or a flat symbol in front of the note itself or you can get what's known as a key signature. So right at the start of a piece of music you'll just get some sharps or flats and then it just means that you have to remember to sharp or flat those notes every time you come across them during the piece of music. So that's the pitch information. You're also going to need to know how long to hold each of these notes for and when to play them. So that's when rhythmic information comes in handy. So you've got different note types, so quarter notes, uh, eighth notes, half notes, that kind of thing. So that's telling you how long each note lasts relative to the actual tempo of the piece relative to the other notes in the piece and then each of those note values also has a corresponding 
rest. So that's just stuff that you need to memorize. There are you know, plenty of, of books and, and videos where you can get that kind of information from. Once you understand that, it's then a question of translating that information onto the guitar. So you want to be able to see a note and then find it on the guitar. And this is where it gets slightly more complex. I mean, if you see a note uh, and play it on the piano, there's only one place you can play each individual note on a piano. On the guitar, you've got more options. And uh, that's where your tab has arguably got a little bit of an advantage over traditional notation. You can be specific about where you play each of these notes. But if you're just reading from traditional notation, you've got a choice where you play this stuff. But uh, ultimately, that's quite a freeing thing and you're, you're free to play melodies wherever you see fit on the guitar, where it fits best, where it sounds best. So let's start with this note here. This is a C note. This would be middle C on the piano. It's quite easy to remember and to recognise. It just sits underneath the five lines of the staff. It's got a little line of its own and on the guitar we generally play that uh, in a couple of different places. You could play it here at the third fret on the A string or we could play it here at the eighth fret on the low E string. Uh, I'm going to suggest we play it here and generally when I'm reading melodies on the guitar I like to read around the middle of the fretboard somewhere. I think a lot of guitar reading method books will start you off down at this end of the fretboard which personally I don't think is quite so good. A lot of melodies tend to sit better a bit higher up the fretboard and, and here you've got access to a good wide range of notes and if you need higher notes you can just reach up the higher strings. If you need lower notes you can just reach down on the lower strings. So finding your melodies around this zone of the guitar is a good starting point I think. And we could play our C note here, just playing that with my little finger at the 8th fret on the low E string and then we could just go up a C major scale like this. And you can see how easy it is once you've got that starting point of the middle C, the notes just go up in stepwise fashion. You've got line space, line space, um, all the way through the octave until you reach this C note here, which is the third space up. And straight away, visually, the music is very clear. You can see that's a scale. It's just going smoothly up from line to space. And you can skip about a little bit more. If you had a C major arpeggio, for example, that would look like this. C, E, G, up to C and back again. Uh, again, it's very easy to recognise on the score. You're just going from line to line to line. Whenever you're moving from line to line or from space to space, you're moving up in thirds. And then melodies are often a combination of those things. So stepwise movement and interval skips. And once you get a little bit of practice, it's actually quite easy to recognise those patterns and to play some simple melodies. <laughs> One thing you could perhaps do is just get some blank music paper and just write some random melodies using those notes from that simple C major scale and just get used to recognising those notes and recognising where they fall on the guitar fretboard. And things can obviously get quite a bit more complex than that, but I hope that at least gives you a starting point. And then after that, you can expand the range of your pitches into the next octave. You can obviously introduce some different rhythms as well, some rests and then eventually you can add in some sharps and flats as well. And once you do get a bit more experienced reading music, then one thing that I recommend is thinking in terms of key and visualizing scale shapes on the fretboard. That really helps, I think. Uh, if you know what key a piece of music is in, then you can think about the scale shape, you can find a convenient place to play that on the fretboard and it makes a lot of things much easier. You've got those sharps or flats built into the scale pattern. You don't need to worry too much about them during the course of the piece of music. So for example, if I'm playing in the key of C major, I'm thinking about this scale fingering. If I'm thinking, I don't know, F major, I could play that here. And I know that in that F major scale, there's a B flat built into that. And those flat notes are within the scale shape already. Um, if I'm playing uh, I don't know, B flat major, I could play that here. And that scale shape is giving me the two flats that you need in the key of B flat major. So the B flat and the E flat They're built into that scale shape. So thinking in terms of keys and then scale fingerings makes 
sight reading a lot easier. So I hope that's given you a few ideas to get started. Beyond that, it's really just a question of practice and doing as much reading as possible. So you can really develop that speed of being able to recognize a note and then find it on the fretboard instantly. And uh, I'm just going to share with you a few of my favorite uh, music reading materials. I'm sure there are now plenty of uh, resources available online. I'm not sure exactly what is out there. Maybe I should make a, a reading course myself at some point. But uh, personally, I quite like that the old school approach, just getting some music reading books. So uh, I've got a, a few things over here. I mean, one of the books that I found useful when I was learning to play were these old kind of Berkeley books. And it's not a, a reading method per se but it, it contains no tabs so you have to read to be able to work your way through these books so they're kind of you know, old school and uh, you know, a bit kind of austere and, uh, and, and and joyless in some places but um, it certainly sort of did the trick for me and kind of got me got me reading quite confidently uh, more up-to-date reading books so I've used this one a little bit with some of my private students in the past this is a uh, was it uh, music reading for guitar by David Oakes? That's that's not bad. I've sort of had some success using that. And uh, yeah, you can really just pick up, you know, any any sheet music really. So you you could go into a, a charity shop, just get some violin music, or some piano music. Just read the treble clef part of the piano music. Saxophone music is great as well. I've just got so, you know, just some some random saxophone music books, which can be great. And just you know, finding some great classical music. There's lots of, of, of great classical music available online. So Bach violin music, Bach chorales are quite simple to read. And just uh, you know, that way you're, you're playing some, some beautiful music, but you're also learning how to read. Another thing you can do is just grab a copy of the real book. And this is something that I used to do when I was getting my reading together and just play through you know, one or two pieces from the real book every practice session and not only is that a great way of learning to read music but you're also sort of soaking up some of the language of jazz and learning some of these classic pieces that every jazz player is expected to know. Well let's leave it there for this week's video. I know it's been a slightly different kind of a video this week but hope some of you have found it interesting. I hope it maybe inspires some of you to have a try reading some music. Thanks for watching. See you next time.